Welcome to the complete story of Whitening Returns, Final Fantasy XIII. The conclusion to the often sadly overlooked Final Fantasy XIII trilogy. This last installment undoubtedly being the most overlooked of them all. But thankfully, we're here to help you remember, and to help keep the flag of Final Fantasy XIII flying high. Unlike the previous games, especially the original Final Fantasy XIII, there are many ways to play Lightning Returns, so retelling the game's story will always entail pinning down events in a specific way, even though players have more freedom to pursue the story in the order they desire. But don't worry, all the parts are there, carefully curated for your maximum enjoyment. But anyway, I'm Peter from Birds of Play, and in this video, I hope you'll join us as we revisit the complete story of Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy XIII. It's gonna take a while for the world to end, but I hope you stay with us until the final bell tolls. In the year 1000 AF, a thousand years after the fall of Cocoon, and 500 years after chaos flooded the mortal realm, Lightning awakens from her crystal slumber in the world of Nova Chrysalia. A world doomed to be destroyed with only 13 days to go. Lightning has teamed up with her former companion, Hope Estime, who feeds her information from afar and helps her crash the feast at the end of time, the last revelry, which is presided over by none other than Snow Villiers, another one of their former comrades, who is now known as the patron of the pleasure city of Usnan. Once inside, Lightning extracts Aradia from the guards who try to block her entry, absorbing it into herself for safekeeping in the hope of guiding their souls past the end of the world. Suddenly, the overwhelming chaos inside Snow's palace spawns forth monsters, so Lightning and Snow once again team up to make short work of them. Snow referring to Lightning as the Savior, a legendary banisher of darkness, bringer of light and redeemer of souls. Once the beasts have been dealt with, Lightning and Snow then turn their weapons on each other, their inhuman abilities seemingly matched until Lightning brings Snow to his knees. Before they can settle their differences, however, they are interrupted by a girl bearing a strange resemblance to Sarah, Lightning's younger sister and Snow's dead fiancé, who breaks Lightning's sword in two. Snow scolds the girl, referring to her as Lumina, but Lumina gleefully retorts that he is not supposed to throw his life away. As Lumina departs, Snow tells Lightning that not even the Savior will stop him, before retreating into the chaos. Unwilling to leave him to his own devices, Lightning chases after Snow, all the while being guided by Hope, but she is intercepted by Lumina from within a swirling maelstrom of chaos, breaking her connection to her eye in the sky. Lightning notes that since Lumina is playing around inside the chaos, she can't be human. But Lumina replies that since Lightning still retains her senses inside the chaos, she can't be one of God's regular lackeys. Lumina summons a beast for Lightning to fight, but even after having slain it, Lightning's pursuit is ultimately thwarted by a chaos-infused door which bars her passage, forcing her to regroup. Lightning is teleported away by Hope to the now-broken Historia Crux, marking the end of time. While there, she thinks back on her choices, regretting turning to Sarah for her help since she ended up sending her to her death. As a result, a lightning entered crystal stasis, praying that she might one day undo what she had done. Centuries later, she was touched by the light of God himself, Punivelze, who spoke to her, making her his servant, telling her that if she succeeded in freeing mankind's souls, and ushering them to the new world he is crafting for them, she would be rewarded with a miracle. Sarah would be returned to life. Returning to the Ark, Lightning is greeted by Hope in the flesh, who has physically regressed to his teenage state for reasons unknown. In lonely command of the Ark, Hope helps Lightning complete her mission, all the while tending to the tree Yggdrasil, which acts as a preserving force for the world extending its life to the maximum of 13 days in exchange for Aradia, obtained whenever a soul is saved. After each day, 
Lightning is pulled back into the Ark, where she relinquishes the Aradia she has collected from saved souls to the tree. Each new bloom on the Yggdrasil granting more time to the world. Lightning is eager to continue her pursuit of snow, but Hope suggests that she continue her quest somewhere else for the time being, since Snow's palace will still be on high alert. Letting things cool down a bit in use none, Hope transports Lightning directly onto a train headed for Luxerion, the capital of the world, or what's left of it anyway. There, Lightning learns of the children of Etro, a group of heretics hell-bent on murdering women with rose-colored hair as they bear a likeness to Lightning, the savior whom they believe to be the harbinger of the coming apocalypse. After investigating the crime scene of the most recent murder, Lightning follows the children of Etro to their secret rendezvous spot in the Forgotten Graveyard, where she observes them using a secret code to enter. Lightning and Hope deduce that the only way to infiltrate the cult's rituals is to find a string of codes scattered throughout the city, but cannot do so until the following day. Not to want to twiddle her thumbs, however, Lightning uses her time wisely to alleviate the people of their burdens, saving their souls in the process, one at a time. At 6 a.m. sharp, Lightning is transported back to the Ark to regulate the time distortion, the first day of her quest being over. Once there, Hope instructs her to step forward and offer the Aradia she has gathered to Yggdrasil, so that they can give time back to the world. Hope explains that the more Aradia Lightning collects, the more she can extend the life of the tree and push back the day of destruction, after which God awakens. He then tells her that there are certain areas within Nova Quisalia he wants her to focus on. Five locations where he is picking up anomalous chaos readings. One of them being the palace in the city of Yuznan, where snow is located. Another one is in the heart of Luxerion. One more in the scorching sands of the dead dunes. And finally, Hope has measured two large chaos fluctuations in the wildlands. Each location being linked to a person and the darkness in their hearts. The people in question have massive burdens on them, the fate of many resting on their shoulders. As Lightning heads down to the surface the following day, she is intercepted by Lumina, resting atop the throne of Etro. While she is there, Hope is unable to hear or see her, and Lumina tells her that that is because they are inside of Lightning, a safe place that even God can't penetrate, almost like an unseen realm. Lumina tells her that even though Hope might not realize it, everything he learns gets passed straight on to God. Believing herself to have nothing to hide, Lightning sees no issue with his arrangement, but Lumina seems to believe otherwise, telling her to keep playing the loyal little servant. As Lumina bids Lightning farewell, the image of Sarah appears beside her and disappears along with Lumina. Regaining her senses, Lightning finds herself in the Historia Crux, hope being none the wiser of what transpired inside her heart. While searching for the codes the next day, Lightning senses a mysterious presence tailing her, and assumes it to be the Shadow Hunter, whom the children of Etro believe is destined to slay the Savior. As Lightning continues her search for the last remaining code during the evening, she once again encounters Lumina, this time in the Warrens of Luxerion. Lumina shows her an oracle drive, a device worshipped by the children of Etro, which depicts fragments of a prophecy showing lightning dying at the hands of the hunter. Before she can learn more from Lumina, however, she is attacked by Noel Kreis, who is revealed to be the Shadow Hunter. Noel had previously fought alongside Sarah to save the world, working towards a common goal with lightning, but now he believes he must kill her to fulfill the prophecy recorded in the oracle drive. Staying true to the prophecy, Noel tells Lightning that the time for their showdown has not yet come, and takes his leave. After obtaining all the codes, Lightning is finally able to sneak her way into the graveyard of the city, where she comes face to face with the children of Etro during their next ritual attempt. The children of Etro attack her, but are thwarted by none other than Noel, whom they worship as the hunter of prophecy. However, instead of complying with their wishes to kill the savior, Noel condemns them for murdering innocent people, calling them fanatics with blood on their hands. Lightning and Noel team up for a brief moment to take down the heretics, 
forcing them to retreat. Before he can leave, Noel tells Lightning to travel to the Warrens once more for their final battle, telling her they must fight in the place ordained by the prophecy. Within the depths of the Warrens, Lightning finds Noel watching the Oracle Drive's prophecy and witnesses him being reunited with the Seeress Yule from his era, a girl who was endlessly reborn only to die back when time still flowed normally. Lightning and Noel clash, Lightning being more powerful than ever thanks to the gifts bestowed upon her by Bunevelsa, a mixed blessing which makes her doubt she's even human anymore. Lightning appears to emerge victorious, but Noel then gains the upper hand momentarily. When given a chance to strike at Lightning, however, Noel destroys the Oracle Drive instead, accepting that his current path would only lead him to make more mistakes, disappointing Yule even further. As if replying to his newfound determination, Yule's spirit emerges from the damaged Oracle Drive and promises they will be together before long. Having freed Noel from his burden of guilt, Lightning succeeds in saving his soul, promising him a new beginning in the world once her job is done. Upon returning to the Ark, Lightning is visited by Lumina inside of Lightning's heart, outside of Hope's reach. There she tells her that the prophecy Noel had followed all this time was a fake created by her. Lumina then reminds Lightning that Bunevelsa isn't omniscient and that there are some things that even he can't see, once again alluding to Lightning having a secret agenda, unknown even to herself. After hearing of Lightning's exploits in the city, the leader of the Holy Order in Luxarion requests to see her, granting her an audience at the Luxarion Cathedral. Once Lightning has been granted nighttime access, she discovers that the Holy Order is led by none other than Manil, another one of her former comrades in arms. Joined by Lumina, Manil tells Lightning there is something she must do as head of the Order, and presents her with a swirling mass of chaos residing underneath the cathedral, which they have dubbed the Wind of Sorrow, the wind carrying the laments of the dead. Following the death of the goddess Etro, the cycle of death and rebirth was broken. With no new life being born into the world, the dead were no longer able to pass on, instead staying trapped in perpetual limbo. Even in this sorry state, Manil and Manil alone is nevertheless able to converse with the countless souls trapped within the chaos as they cry out in pain and suffering. Her unique ability having catapulted her to the head of the Order. As the Order's saint, she informs Lightning that she is determined to save the multitude of souls lost in the chaos by setting them free, granting them oblivion as per Bunevelsa's decree. To accomplish this, the Order is currently searching for an artifact which will allow Vanille to complete her duties on the final day of the world. Vanille considers this her atonement for all the people who died because of what they did in the past. As a result, she is determined to see it through, even though the ceremony will cost her her own life. Next, Lightning travels back to Yuznan to confront Snow, who awaits her in his palace. However, once there, she discovers that the entire city has been placed on high alert after her previous unwelcome excursion into the Patron's Palace. Due to the entrance of the Augur's Quarter Plaza, situated in front of the palace being sealed off, Lightning attempts to use an alternate route, instead cutting through the warehouse district to reach the palace. However, midway she is suddenly ambushed by Lumina, who blocks her path by summoning a Cyclops to attack her. Lightning lays the Cyclops low, but before she can celebrate, the beast musters the last of its strength to demolish the pathway they are standing on, causing Lightning to plummet down into the depths of the city. While wandering the abandoned depths, her luck is turned around as she happens upon an entrance card made out to a city official, the card giving her a method to easily access the August Quarter through the front gate. When Lightning enters the plaza, she has hoped to look for a method to infiltrate Snow's palace. Hope deduces that she could create a distraction by sabotaging the mechanism that lifts up the stage during the Song of the Saviour performance held at the plaza. After convincing the director of the show to offer her the lead role in the performance, 
and to dangerously increase the pyrotechnics used for the act, Lightning performs her part admirably, capturing the attention of everyone present. As the show reaches a climax, however, the overabundance of fireworks she has gathered for the show succeeds in destroying the stage, causing the statue in the middle of the plaza to crash into the palace walls, creating a bridge leading straight to her destination on the other side. Inside the palace, Lightning discovers Snow has barricaded himself behind a gate of ice, requiring her to find a way to open it. She finds the engagement necklace he and Sarah wore inside his room, deducing it must be the key to the door. Behind the gate of ice, Lightning finds Snow, who reveals he created the door as a method of proving she was not an imposter. The fact that she recognized the necklace being proof of who she is. Snow desires death as penance for his failure to protect Sarah and the world. He intends to have Lightning kill him after he has absorbed the chaos infusion at the center of the palace he had been containing to save Yuznan, sacrificing himself in the process. Snow transforms into a monstrous Seath, telling Lightning to watch over the world he failed to save. Lightning defeats the out-of-control Snow in battle, but refuses to deal the finishing blow to end his misery. Instead, she slaps him around, reminding him of who he is and convincing him that her sister's soul still wishes to be with him, and that he must pull himself together so that she has someone to come home to. Against all odds, Lightning succeeds in bringing Snow back from the brink of becoming a monster, reverting his transformation into Seath and saving his soul. As she returns to the Ark, Lumina accuses Lightning of putting wishes in the mouths of the dead, questioning whether Lightning has any right to say what Sarah would want, even if it was to save Snow. Lumina cryptically tells her that Sarah isn't even dead, but Lightning replies knowingly that even now she can feel her presence. Lumina asks whether that isn't just something she wants to believe, telling Lightning she is a lot weaker than she thought she was. Having saved two of the five souls, Hope had prioritized, Lightning heads to the Wildlands, the last surviving wilderness, nature's last stand. There she hears stories of the fabled Angel of Valhalla, a chocobo of fate whom she is ordained to meet. As she goes looking for the mythical creature, she finds it injured and nurses it back to health, allowing her to freely ride it around the Wildlands aiding her on her quest. At the edge of the Wildlands, Lightning discovers a troubled Saj Catroy, the next person on her list of former allies overcome by the sorry state of the world. Saj grieves over his comatose son Daj, whose soul has been fragmented and scattered around the world, leaving him not but a shell of his former self. Saj has searched the world over to no avail but Lightning nevertheless offers to lend a helping hand. While gathering the soul fragments, Lightning discovers Chocolina, who aided her sister Anol on their quest 500 years ago, and now aids Lightning on her own quest, is none other than the human manifestation of the chocobo chick Saj had been carrying around on their original adventure. Returning to Saj and Daj, fragments in hand, Lightning offers them to the grief-stricken father, but as Sarge attempts to do the honors, he is forced to rediscover his playfulness so that Daj can once again open up his heart to his father. As Sarge begins to forget his worries and earnestly play around with the miniature airship they used to play with, Daj awakens to join the fun. Tears run down Sarge's overjoyed face, and with father and son reunited, Sarge's soul is saved. Saying goodbye to Sarge, Lightning has a little talk with Lumina, who tells her that Das saw how desperate his father was to save him, nearly driving him mad. This led to Daj hiding his heart away, even though his father had the best of intentions. Lumina tells Lightning that their relationship reminds her of Lightning and Sarah, as Lightning is now in the process of sacrificing everything to save her sister. Hearing her words, Lightning tells Lumina that she will save Sarah, even if it means she will hate her for it. Elsewhere in the Wildlands, Lightning discovers Mog, the Mughal whom Lightning had entrusted to Sarah as a good luck charm. 
Moog has reunited with his Moogul friends and is now leading the Moogul village hidden deep in the jugged woods. At first, Morg fears confronting Lightning as he feels culpable for Sarah's death, but Lightning doesn't blame Morg. Instead, she is happy to see him and asks him to be there on the final day when Sarah will be revived. Bidding farewell to the Wildlands for the time being, Lightning travels to the dead dunes, a barren wasteland of desert and ruins. There she finds Fang, the last one of her former comrades, which she had yet to be reunited with. She discovers that Fang is leading a group of bandits and joins in their quest of locating the Holy Clavis needed for the ritual only Vanille can perform. Using her powers as the savior, Lightning is able to uncover a path to the temple ruins underneath the desert, but learns that they cannot open the gate to the Clavis without first displaying the murals of the gods. After uncovering the murals, Lightning and Fang learn how the god Lindsay fashioned humans from the blood of the goddess Etro. Fang suspects that rather than being driven by benevolence, he did it so that humans would do his bidding, both Fang and Lightning having developed a particular distrust for divinity. The next mural shows them how humans were destined to die, in an endless cycle of death and rebirth that was stopped when time ended, bestowing humans with an unnatural form of immortality and no chance of salvation in death. The last mural depicts Bunevelse himself, encouraging the cleansing of the dead, purging the tormented dead from their existence, and paving the way for a world free of their defilement. With the path to the Clavis at last opened, Fang attempts to destroy it, so that Vanil cannot perform the Soul Song, the ritual which would take her life. However, they are repelled by the force emitted from the artifact. Suddenly, secutors from the Order of Salvation arrive and demand that the two hand over the Clavis, sending a creature known as Grendel to attack them. After defeating the monster, Lightning and Fang discover that the Clavis fell into the Order's hands during the ruckus. Lumina then reveals that she was the one who led the secutors to them and tells them that the ceremony will take place on the last day of the world. Lightning urges Fang to meet her in Luxerion on Nova Chrysalia's final day to convince Vanille not to go through with it, offering her comfort and setting her on her path. With one more soul left to save, Lightning returns to the Wildlands once more, this time riding the Angel of Valhalla all the way to Etro's temple from where the Chaos is beating into the area. There she discovers that the origin of the Great Chaos is the Seeress Yule's fragmented soul and meets her numerous incarnations, along with Caius, who yearns for death, yet is unable to die. Caius tells Lightning that even as the savior, she cannot grant him salvation, since the many Yules hold many opposing wishes, some dreaming of granting him release, while others demand the opposite, wishing to stay with him. The two of them fight, but despite Lightning defeating Caius, she cannot claim his soul, as he is constantly reborn in death as per Yule's wishes to stay with him. Since Lightning can't save anyone who doesn't wish to be saved, Caius and the Yules remain at the temple, intending to be destroyed alongside Nova Chrysalia, as there is no place for them in the new world. Before Lightning leaves, one of the Yules reveal that the Angel of Valhalla is in fact the reborn form of Odin, her steed, her knight, her champion, her Eidolon from back when she was a Lassie. Upon realizing this, Lightning rejoices in the knowledge of having her faithful friend back by her side, considering this a much welcome reunion. During her quest, Lightning is baited with an apparition of Sarah, who promises to be with her soon in the new world. But Lightning feels no warmth toward her would-be sister, and fears she has lost a part of her humanity. Lumina appears and helps Lightning realize something is missing. Lightning is reminded that when she entered the Crystal Stasis, she had Sarah's soul cocooned inside herself, but that Bunevelse removed Sarah from her heart as he woke Lightning to do his bidding. Lightning implies she will turn against Bunevelse if he does not fulfill his part of their deal, and Lumina reminds her that if that happens, Lightning will have to betray Hope, her one friend in Nova Chrysalia. Before departing, Lumina suggests that the apparitions of Sarah, Hope, and perhaps even Lightning herself are but lies. 
The next time they meet, Lumina shows lightning apparitions of her friends and claims lightning pushes them away, rejecting their help. Lightning then meets Yule inside her heart, who implies lightning is incomplete and thus unable to save anyone before first saving herself. Lightning ponders as to what she might be missing and asks Lumina to reveal what she knows. However, Lumina tells her that it doesn't work like that and that she must figure it out on her own. As the end draws near, the souls of the dead that reside in the chaos appear before Lightning in the form of Sid Reigns, a man who had once defied fate. Through Reigns, the countless multitudes of souls which call chaos home ask Lightning for her help, as Bunevelsa sees them as impurities that need to be purged. Reigns asks Lightning to put a stop to the soul song ritual Vanil is planning to perform. He tells her that even though she doesn't know it, Vanille can do what Lightning cannot. She can guide the dead to the new world to be reborn. Reigns tells her that answering their prayer means defying Punevelsa, and that those who try to defy their gods risk being controlled by them and destroyed in the end. Just like Sid Reigns, who had fought their falsy overlords for the sake of humanity. Lightning learns that chaos must not be eradicated from the world, because it is the material human hearts are made of, the connective tissue that unites all of mankind, a power that gods cannot see. Upon a person's death, their souls will melt into the chaos to await rebirth, Sarah's soul included. Reigns tells Lightning that the potential power of the chaos is limitless, and that if Lightning could tap into it, with the blessing of those who make up the chaos, she might be granted enough strength to stand up to God himself. After learning of this, Lightning thinks that if she were to plunge herself into the chaos and call out, Sarah might respond. As Lightning does her best to collect Eradia, the world is rewarded with one extra day, as the lost thirteenth hour returns to existence. The hole created in space as a consequence reveals the Eye of the Chaos Storm, a labyrinth created by God as a testing ground for new creatures. As Lightning braves the depths of the labyrinth, she is faced by many creatures, the last one being Ereshkigal, a fearsome foe who Lightning must fight. Upon defeating the creature, Lightning and Hope discuss how humanity wasn't created by the gods out of love, but rather as tools to be used. Hope says that at the very least, Lightning's victory over the beast is proof of the power of humanity, but Lightning questions whether it was her humanity which helped her bring the beast low, doubting whether she can still be called a child of man. On the last day, Hope bids farewell to Lightning, as God doesn't need him anymore. Hope asks Lightning to help the others and stop Vanille from performing the Soul Song. Hope has faith that once Vanille realizes the error of her ways, that she will do the right thing. Lightning apologizes to Hope for not trusting him as the servant of God, but Hope tells her it was the right thing to do, as that wasn't the real him, but rather just a pawn in God's game. In his final moments, Hope is happy that he can be himself at the very end. Hope thanks her for always having his back, and tells her that thanks to her, he could always face forward without fear. Returning to an empty ark, Lightning is surprised to find Mork waiting for her with a message, telling her to keep her eyes front, implying that he's now got her back, much like Hope might have. On the final day, the chaos swallows all but the Luxurian Cathedral, and as Lightning arrives, Lumina appears and tells her that the Order plans to destroy the souls of the dead to free those still living from remembering them. Only this way can they experience perpetual bliss in Bunevelis' new world. In order to stop the Soul Song, Lightning breaks into the cathedral, where she is joined by Noel, who fends off the guards, while Lightning ventures into the heart of the cathedral. There she is joined by Fang, just as promised, and together they make their way to Vanille. As they arrive, the ritual is already underway. But as they force Vanille to listen to the dead, she learns that despite their suffering, the souls carry the hope of being reborn. Vanille stops the ritual, and snow bursts in through the ceiling 
destroying the Clavis using Fang's spear. Afterwards, Fang and Vanille guide the dead to the Ark to be reborn in the New World, with their saved souls acting as the guiding light. As the bells toll at the end of the world, Lightning's purpose as the savior of souls is fulfilled. Lumina and Yule appear, and Lumina tells Lightning that it's time for her to get Sarah back. Yule then explains that Lightning made Lumina as a tomb to keep her sister's memory safe. As Lumina disappears, Sarah's soul calls out to Lightning before being absorbed by the rest of the chaos. Suddenly, the light of God appears, as Bunevelse reveals hope to be a puppet body he has been using to purge humanity of their impurities. Now, having taken over Hope's body entirely, Bunevelse invites Lightning as the savior to gaze upon the new world that God has wrought. Before Lightning joins God, she is intercepted by Mog, who offers his aid and introduces Lightning to the savior's trials she may undertake before meeting her maker. In order to prepare for the confrontation, Lightning undergoes the trials and is rewarded with the power of the Ultima Weapon, the blade which was broken by Lumina, now reforged in chaos as a gift from Sarah. Having made her preparations, Lightning asks Mog to stay behind to act as their lighthouse, a beacon to help them find their way back. She then seeks out Bunevelsa's true body in Cosmogenesis, an otherworldly dimension where Bunevelsa is in the process of creating his new world. Using hope as his mouthpiece, Bunevelsa explains his plan for Lightning to replace the late Etro as the goddess of death, and protect the balance of the new world, a world unfettered by grief and grudges. She rejects the offer and rebels against Bunevelsa, as she desires a world free of gods where humans can decide their own paths in life. Lightning tells Bunevelsa that despite being a god, he could never see into their hearts. Upon hearing this, Bunevelsa finally steps out of Hope's shadow, admitting that their souls are in fact opaque to him, meaning that they have no value and must be remade. He promises to return their flesh to clay, remake it, remold it, making it perfect. This purification will make humanity a vessel for God himself, transcendent and supreme, allowing them to rejoice in the light of God's love as he shall descend and inhabit their frail bodies, reading their hearts and bringing them joy. Lightning refuses this perfect new world, accepting her role as the goddess of death, her first act being to bring death to God himself. Bunevelse calls on the power of the great and mighty Pulse and radiant and shining Lindsay to overcome Lightning's defiance. However, the power Bunevelse had granted to her savior has made Lightning strong enough to take him on, the brilliance of her light outshining even his own. As Lightning plunges herself along with Bunevelse down into the chaos, she tells him that even though he has the power of a god, he also has the power of a human inside of him, and now that human is going to destroy him. Lightning reaches out for the last soul she'll save, freeing Hope's soul from the clutches of Bunevelse. As Hope regains his senses, Lightning tells him to go to the new world, a world of hope, waiting for him to be born again. Lightning says that she will stay behind to maintain the chaos and keep Bunevelse under control. Before Lightning can follow through with her plan, however, the simulcrum of Sarah, Bunevelse had created to keep Lightning compliant, appears to her and implores Lightning to find the real Sarah. It is revealed that when Bunevelse purged Sarah's soul from Lightning before making her the savior, Lightning's rejected feelings of weakness and youth that had always lain latent within herself had been made manifest by the chaos, creating Lumina in the image of Lightning as a child, who then became a vessel for Sarah's soul. Lightning accepts this part of herself she had wanted to deny for so long, and Lumina is reintegrated into Lightning, freeing Sarah's soul and restoring Lightning's heart to normal. As Bunevelsa rages with all his might, Lightning is joined by Snow, Hope, Noel, Vanille, Fang, and their Eidolons to bring an end to his tyranny. Together they deal a heavy blow to Bunevelsa, freeing humanity's souls and offering them passage to the new world. Along with them are Saj and Dash, who had been looking for Sarah in the chaos, bringing her and Mog with them 
for the ultimate reunion at the end of the world. The sisters are finally reunited, and as Punevelse masters the last of his divine and terrifying power, Lightning and the others join together to finally fell the god with the combined power and brilliance of their souls. As the dust settles, all that is left behind is a dark wasteland. Suddenly Caius and the various incarnations of Yule appear before Lightning and her friends and the Yules announce their decision to take over Etro's role as the protectors of the dead and the keepers of the cycle of death and rebirth. Finally reunited with Yule, Noel refuses to accept this and offers his own life in her place. Noting his determination, Caius allows the final incarnation of Yule, the one who wishes to be with Noel, to leave while Caius and the other Yules are drawn into the new unseen realm. With the old world no more, Lightning and her friends find a glimmering crystal in the void. Hope asks whether Bonavelsa is truly no more, but Lightning says that it doesn't matter whether he is really gone or merely sleeping, since even if he returns, they will defeat him again. As Lightning touches the crystal, the world is filled with light, and Morg and the Eidolons bid their farewells to the humans. Lightning looks back on their thousand-year journey, remembering all that has led them to this outcome, shedding a single tear for the memories they share together. She tells everyone it's time, and they leave for the new world in unison. The time of crystals and gods is over, banished into a past that no longer is. While humankind is born afresh, there's being a new future, bright with promise, allowing them to survive and prosper. The Crystal Age has now just become but a legend from before the world was born. Having begun her life anew, Lightning, no longer dressing like a soldier or a servant of the Divine, steps off a train in a peaceful countryside on a journey to once again be reunited with her friends, finally free to live as she pleases. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed our complete retelling of Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII. This video was commissioned by David LeJenkins over on our Patreon. We would like to thank him and our other patrons for all their support. If you want to support us and help shape the content that we make, head on over to Patreon to join our community and be more like David. Looking forward to seeing you there, but until next time, kaka! -ka.